All right, let's have a seat. So on the left-hand side is the object that we made here with our little build tool. Build, build. Let's build something different. Well, we, and we put that one. Well, that looks different, doesn't it? Then we download it. More, more. Save as Kaleida. We'll call this one hollow cylinder. Yeah, and then over here, instead of using this torus unedited, did we go find the hollow cylinder that we just put in there? Ta-da! And that's what it looks like. So that's how easy it is to create a 3D object in one platform, download it, and import it into our other platform. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 51, Riku. In today's episode, we did some reflection and we have decided to include what we call our 3D piano kits in our next presentation. We completed our first presentation this week and we have another one next month. And we also decided we wanted to compose, continue our compositional efforts in 2442558 with an abstract theme, and we had something in mind. And while we were doing all that, we discovered some very interesting new uh, settings, modifiers. So we're going to show you all that. And here we go. Look at this. There is no microphone driving it. I mean, we were showing you this a minute ago where the microphone, here's the microphone driving the angles and everything. Uh, right here on the x-axis. If I turn the mic off, nothing happens, it just sits still. Turn the mic on and it jiggles. If I change it to the z-axis, it rotates that way. And if I wanted to, I could use a rotate vector like this where I was putting everything, everything all at once like that. Except, what's going on? We have something called increase here. Increase increase is a way to make it automatically um, change whether or not there's a microphone input or not. So, that was news to us. So, we had a blast experimenting with that. We'll turn all this off for a minute just to show you what we progressed through. The first thing is just rotating around the z-axis, which is that one. The second thing was um, moving from left to right using what's called a ramp. So this was an increase rotate and this is a ramp translate. Then, then, we rotated and we enabled moving. So now we've got this block, this tumbleweed. If we had a tumbleweed shape, we'd be in good shape there. The next thing we tried was something called the triangle. And the triangle is basically bounces back and forth, bing, bong, bing, like that, which was awfully cool. And then again, um, if we enable the rotate, now we get a rotating effect. And then if we turn everything on, my lord, it just becomes a cacophony of interesting shapes with something in the middle. So that was new. That was new, that we could make something move without having to talk or play music all at the same time. Nothing wrong with playing music all at the same time. In fact, the next thing we did is that in our 3D platform, we went over and we went to our scales and instead of downloading the whole thing at once, the whole thing at once, we downloaded each of the cubes individually so the whole thing at once looked like this, where everything was rotating all at the same time. And then individual notes, we're experimenting with just three at the moment. And this at the moment is hooked up to music. So I'll play a little music for you here. So that was kind of fun. That was, that was a lot of fun, actually. And our, what we're envisioning doing, you can see that we've been positioning it so that 
Let's turn off transparency for a minute. Nope. So that this will match the the eight note version. We're again stop rotating it for a minute just to see what it looks like. So we're kind of thinking of matching this center scale with, uh, with, with the actual shapes and each individual shape rotates instead of uh, all the whole thing is kind of one glued together line. So we had fun with that. Another thing we did, we brainstormed with our uh, theme of the composition and we've come up with the, the name Bodhisattva Cycle. And we're going to use nine at the moment, nine. Um, the first thing is called perpetrate, which is to carry out a harmful action. Project, which is to attribute to others. The third thing is racket or racketeer, to call forth demand from people, like a racket, pay me or else. Uh, trigger, which is something that causes an intense reaction. Cast a darkened area, which is shadow. Bring to light, which is detection. Intervene for reconciliation, which is mediate. Uh, forgive, give up the desire to punish. Restore, which is renew. So we're kind of envisioning this as a nine part cycle. Of course, we only have eight notes in our scale and we wanted to have a six scene animation. So we're gonna have fun with that. Nevertheless, that was fun. That was a lot of fun figuring that out. So, we also heard from uh, Yashwani. We stopped by again, and we had a really cool dialogue, and along the way, we ended up uh, reviewing the Japanese traditional triscales and contemporary pentatonic scales. And how did we end up doing that? Well, we were talking about the commonalities between Western and Indian music, the 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 C and the G note, for example. So we kind of updated our little demo score on that here. Um, in the Indian scale, Sa Pa sounds like this. In Western interval, it's called Do Sol. Hey, same thing. And then in the Japanese, um, it's not clear that they have a scale, a seven note scale. What they have are three note tetrachords like this. and they stack them on top of each other. So it is possible to put two of them together, which uh, was done here. And in that you have a C and a G, which is again, that particularly pretty interval. Just for grins, compare the J Jap and then, and then it turns out the Japanese made their own minor pentatonic scale. which compares to the Western scale. And other cool stuff. And then just for comparison, here is our minor scale. So there's definite differences there. Notice that this has a D and an E flat up here. I'm sure you noticed that. But here we have a D and a G flat, and here they have no D. So um, pretty cool, pretty cool. And that kind of got initiated through a dialogue with Yashwani. Uh, we also did some work. Uh, we decided to use 3D piano kits in our next presentation, which is next month, and um, did a bunch of stuff on that. And like we said, we researched some themes and, and figured out these little modifiers, which are called increase ramp and triangle. We also ended up adding, exploring some more symbol timbres to go with our improvisation one. So what we're going to do is play this for you with the new improved percussion. Not only do we have an open hi-hat, right, and two, count them, two ride cymbals, uh, and then our ever popular crash cymbal here. So I think that's four that I just counted there. So here we go.
So I'd have to say what we really like about today's session are multiple things. Just playing with different timbres of a cymbal. I mean, we knew that the different metal flat things that drummers hit with sticks could have different sounds, but we never experimented a lot with it until today. Uh, and then revisiting the Japanese scales, which is something we'd seen a couple years ago because of the dialogue with Yishwani was particularly pleasing. So that concludes today's stream. What we look forward to doing next time is continue our 3D piano kit and our animation work. So tune in next time, see what happens. Do come back, do take care, and do keep on streaming.